Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon Trading Card Game for the Game Boy Color. In the last episode, we beat Imakuni and got our Fire Medal, I believe it was, this episode. We're going to go to the Science Club and see if we can't beat uh, the leader here. Now, I don't... He's in the middle of a very important experiment. So, uh, maybe the three people are in this room? There's one. And he's up there in his room. He's being guarded. David. The machine, it's not quite working yet. Well, while you make that decision, do you want to duel me? Yeah, let's 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 fight. Single match with four prize. Look at him, so smug. Everybody in this game is smug. So the science club. Uh, in between episodes, I thought about changing my deck up because we're kind of getting to the point now where whoops, where oh, I have an Onyx and a Growlithe. We're gonna start with. The Growl... Uh, nah, we'll start with the Onyx. And growl from the bench. We're getting to the point now where I'm probably going to have to start div like uh, changing my strategy a little bit uh, to accommodate for the certain types of clubs that we're going to be playing. Like, for example, the, uh, the Water Club will be tough because they have a type advantage over me on, uh, on, uh, on my Fire Types. And same thing with the Psychic Club when it comes to my uh, fighting types. So I want to maybe start to change it up. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Hitmonchan. It's like my favorite card ever. But uh, yeah, your Pokeball didn't work, bitch. Um, I've, I've, I've thought about it and I realized that, oh, I'm weak to that, aren't I? I might, I think I am. That's okay, he's missing, so this is fine. Oh yeah, no damage, what you know about it. Um, I realized that, when I was thinking about it, that the uh, the Elite Four, essentially, in this game is pretty much, like, they're based off of the legendary birds. So, this, this game follows the same formula as the uh, main Pokemon RPGs, being that there's, uh, there's basically an Elite Four, and then after that, you have to fight your rival. Now, each elite, elite Four member has a legendary bird card. So, an Articuno, which in this game is an ice, it's water. Uh, a Zapdos, which is electric, and then a Moltres, which is fire. So, out of the four Elite Four members, three of them are fire, water, electric. And then the fourth guy, he plays dragons, quote-unquote, you know, considering that the only... A dragon in the first gen was uh, Dratini Dragonair Dragonite, but he plays a special Dragonite card, and that uh, all four of them. The main <laughs> my, my main point to this is all four of them are resistant to fighting, and then your rival plays just like a, a souped-up version of the deck he's already playing, which I think is just like multicolored good stuff, so, uh, uh, oh man, if I could knock this Nidran out with my Onyx, that'd be awesome. I'm definitely not going to retreat it. So, I really want to play, <laughs> there's a certain deck I really want to play, but I know I would have to grind for it, because when I was thinking about decks I actually want to play, it's actually the deck that the leader of the, um, of the Water Club plays. And it, it's a it's a deck called Rain Dance, and it gets its namesake from the Pokemon power that Blastoise has. And I'll probably save and uh, well, no, I'll explain it now. Who cares? So Blastoise has a Pokemon power called Rain Dance, which basically says during your oh I can I can kill it with the plus power. Oh, we're gonna get there, kids. It basically says you can play as many water energies a turn as you want. Which basically is breaking the rules. Oh, he's going to kill me now. Awesome. You know, because you can only play one energy a turn regardless of what it is, but Blastoise says, hey, you can play as many as you want. Which doesn't sound, like, too ridiculous, but it is once you realize that a lot of the water Pokemon in this game, like Blastoise, uh, Polyrath, Lapras, they all have a water gun attack 
which says this attack does like a base amount of damage plus 10 for each water energy on it past whatever you need to actually use the attack. And it normally caps out because I believe the Blastoise is three blue, uh, three water energies and it does 40. And then you can add up to three water energies and it caps out at 70. I, 70 or 80, one of those two. But uh, it caps out. And it doesn't sound too ridiculous except for the fact that if you think about it strategy-wise... Please don't kill me, thank you. If you think about it strategy-wise... So there's a Pokemon... Tr there's a trainer card called Pokemon Breeder. Which essentially gets or lets you skip the middle portion, like the middle evolution of whatever... What do I have? It lets you skip the middle. So, let's say if I was playing that deck and I had an opener opener of Squirtle, Pokemon Breeder, Blastoise, a bunch of water energies, and like a Professor Oak, for example. So, with that deck, the basic strategy would be, alright, play Squirtle on one, put a water energy on him, say go comes back to you, since you can't evolve a Pokemon on the turn you played it, you go turn two, Pokemon Breeder, um, evolve it into a Blastoise, dump all of your water energies onto the Blastoise, and then you Professor Oak, ditch your hand, oh hey, speak of the devil, you Professor Oak, you ditch your hand, you draw a whole bunch of more hopefully water energies and possibly even another Professor Oak because you're probably playing four of them at that point. So, oh, I should get a... I should put a fire here and then computer search. I'll have a computer search and I have a Professor Oak. I don't want to budge yet. Just, just... But he could kill me if you get double heads. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll computer search. We'll ditch this energy retrieval and a fighting energy and we'll go get a Arcanine there we go alright and then we'll evolve I'm not taking any chances here I'm still going for that undefeated streak on camera minus that one fucker uh, I forget his name now but yeah that's essentially what you want to do you want to you want to dump all your water energies on the Blastoise <laughs> and then Professor Oak Hopefully draw a bunch of water energies and another Professor Oak. Dump all your water energies, play the Professor Oak, and then rinse repeat like a few more times, hopefully. And that's it seems like a really good strategy because it's just super quick. Think about it. On turn two, you go Pokemon Breeder, put the Blastoise on the Squirtle, uh, dump my water energies and do anywhere between 40 to 70 damage on turn two. That's really good. <laughs> really, really good. And then there's another one. I actually had the Prima strategy guide for this game when I was younger. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but I actually had like a weird conundrum. <laughs> I was um, I was in the Walmart where I found this strategy guide for this game. And the strategy guide had a special promo Venusaur card in the back of it and it wasn't held there by anything except like that tacky glue stuff you know that like that like pe when you peel it off it peels really slowly and it stretches really far you know what I'm talking about like the almost like rubber cement kind of shit so it was only that was the only thing holding it there and I was with my parents and I tried like I was having such a conundrum to not steal the thing and if my memory serves. I don't believe that I did, because um, I I just got the <laughs> the strategy guide anyway. They just bought it for me. But uh, I remember that being one of my very uh, my linchpin moments as a kid. Like, do do I? I know stealing is wrong, but I really, really, really want this. <laughs> you know, like nobody would know. I can just put it in my pocket. But uh, in that strategy guide, they had a bunch of different suggestions for like special combo decks. I remember there was one that combos with Alakazam and Tentacool each of which has a Pokemon power that kind of coincide really well. Um, and this is kind of relevant because the leader of the Psychic Club plays Alakazam. Not in this same strategy but plays Alakazam 
File plume. File plume, make a tongue, garbage. Okay, what else? Give me something I can play. Alice, speak of the devil. All right, there we go. So, uh, Pokemon power damage swap. As often as you like, during your turn before you attack, you may move one damage counter from one of your Pokemon to another as long as you don't knock out that Pokemon. And this can't power can't be used if Alexam has a, a thing on him. Uh, 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 fucking what's the word? A status effect. So, essentially, the deck that the Psychic Leader plays is a deck that plays a bunch of Alakazams and then really high hit point Pokemon like uh, Chansey, which has 120, Kangaskhan that has, and Kangaskhan and Snorlax, which each have 90. So, there's a, there's a trainer card called Scoop Up, which says, oh, I guess we gotta lead off with the Mach uh, Ratata, Machop, Ratata, we'll leave, we'll lead off with the Ratata. So there's a trainer card that says, or it's called Scoop Up, and it says, um, I can't remember if it's, no, yeah, it's one, it's one of your Pokemon, to put one of your Pokemon from wherever it is on your board back in your hand. Remove all damage counters and energy cards from it, etc. Oh, a Hitmonchan, we're in luck. And then, there's also a trainer card called Pokemon Center, which says, take all your damage counters off of all your Pokemon, but it also takes all the energy cards off them as well. So essentially, the strategy there is just get an Alakazam into play, keep attacking with it. That's her strategy. It's often regarded as the most difficult fight in the game, or at least out of the four, out of the eight club leaders. It's extremely difficult because she puts an Alakazam out there, and she just keeps chomping away at you. And she keeps using the Pokemon, or the, the damage swap Pokemon power to keep taking all the damage off of the Alakazam and put it onto her bench Pokemon, like the really high hit point Pokemon. And then once they get too high, because as it said, you can't knock them out with that ability. So once their hit points get too high, they scoop up whatever they had on the bench with all the damage counters on it and then just place it back and all the damage is gone. So... Essentially, you have to knock out the Alakazam in one hit, or at least hit it with some sort of status ailment that says it can't attack. Something like that. So it's an extremely hard deck to, to play against. But the strategy that I saw in that book is kind of like a baby strategy of that. Ah, fuck. So it's essentially the same thing. You get an Alakazam out there, and you take advantage of the damage swap. But Tentacool has a Pokemon power that says once per turn you can um, uh, take it from your bench and put it back in your hand. So it's essentially the exact same thing except you don't have to spend uh, trainer cards on it. I swore for the longest time that it just said you can take it off of your bench whenever you want to. I thought it was an infinite combo. Oh, what up, Eric? What up? Your hair looks like a like a like a tropical tree. I can't believe my science Pokemon deck could lose. Well, guess what? There's no such thing as a science type, homie. Look at that Needle King, which is absolutely worthless to me, and a Grass Energy. Is it good? It's a Gengar. I actually like Gengar a lot. Oh, and a Gust of Wind. That's actually really good. I might want to play that, maybe. Alright, do I play you next? Hey you! Rick the Clubmaster is in the middle of an important experiment! He has no time to see someone like you! If you really want to see him, you must defeat me first! Would you like to duel Joseph? Yes! He called me not very smart. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Did you see your hat? I'm gonna shit in your hat, and then I'm not gonna tell you about it. And then I'm gonna watch you put it on, and then I'm gonna laugh at you. Because you're stupid. So yeah, I'm not sure if I want to <laughs> switch my deck or not. I'll figure that out at some point or another. Uh, I don't know why I let off with the Machop. I should have let off with the Ratatata. And some of you might ask, why would you start off with the Ratata as opposed to the Machop? Because they have they put out the same damage. Well, the point of that is the Ratata does the same amount of damage, but. I could retreat it for free before they start... Oh, it's just a 
fucking dicks, and I can't do any damage to it because it has a resistance. Uh, f okay, uh, yeah, see, right there, I made the wrong mistake. We're gonna retreat the Machop, and we're gonna put in the Ratata, son of a bitch. Yep, go. <laughs> I swear, he doesn't have any benched either, that's the most frustrating part. Yep, you have a peck, my friend. See, at this point, I could have already had 20 on him. Oh, that's so frustrating. I could have put 20 on him. I guess I have a potion, so I'm not totally shit out of luck. But this would have been 40 right here, and if he doesn't draw another basic Pokemon, I just win. And let's hope he doesn't. Yep, you have a peck. What's this? Is it a... Is it... Oh, what is the other one? Whirlwind? It's something like that. Some sort of flavory something. Let's look. Mirror move. If Spearow was attacked last turn, do the final result of that attack on Spearow to the defending Pokemon. Okay, so we're fine. Because we're going to put the fire energy on the other Rattata. And we're going to play a potion. Oh, I have a plus power. Never mind. I win. <laughs> I did not notice that plus power. Just chilling. But still, this is turn three. I could have killed him on turn two. That's the aggro Rattata strats, kids. <laughs> That's how we do it. Boom. And you called me not smart. Well, you were technically right, because I didn't lead off with the Rattata, but, but shut up, Joseph. You lost. <sighs> Since I promised, I have to let you through. That's right. And I get packs. Give me something playable, please. Something playable. A Scyther. A Muck. I don't want a Muck. Is that the good Magmar? That is the good Magmar. Give me something good, please. Polyrath. We'll see. There you go. Does 30 damage plus 10 more damage for each water energy attached to it. Uh, and, okay, you can't add more than 20. So it caps out at 50, but still, that's like really good when you did it turn two or three. Don't bother him too much. Hey, whoops, not your desk. I don't want to talk to your desk. I want to talk to you. Science rules nature. Did you guys know that? I would like to do a Rick. Grimes. Bring it. Now, oh, look at that. His head is so disproportionate to his hand. Look how weird that looks. <laughs> and he looks like he has a pencil. I get it. It's like a test tube. It's like a beaker. Oh, no basics, huh? So, yeah, he plays Grass Psychic uh, stuff. There's no... I don't think there's any drawbacks to mulligans with this, unlike Magic, where you got to go down a card. Oh, what do I have? I just have a Growlithe, that's it? Did I see a Professor Oak in my hand? I hope I did. No, a Bill. Well, I mean, it's better than nothing. And he only has two. All right. So he won't have any f any uh, type advantages over my Fire type. And I get the play. So that's really good. Give me a basic Pokemon. That's a plus power. And it's a Grimer. Uh, we're going to put the Fire Energy on the Growlithe. Oh, excuse me. And then we're going to play the Bill. We're going to draw a switch and a fire energy. You know, because having a switch is solid when you only have two or one Pokemon on your whole board. That was my, my strategy. A Mewtwo! Level 60. The level doesn't matter. Grass energy on the Grimer. Nasty goo. Please don't get ahead. That would suck. I said that would suck. Don't do it. That would really blow if he won because I didn't have enough Pokemon. There's a Machop. That's what I like to see. We're going to put the Machop out there. We're going to put the Fighting Energy on the Machop. And do we switch here? Might be good a time as any. Yeah, we'll play the switch. Switch to the Machop. And while we have the... Whoops, not the potion. While we have the opportunity to get the attack in before he possibly can paralyze us, we're just going to use the plus power now. That way, regardless of who gets in there next, be it Machop or Growlithe, we have the 20 damage to knock it out. Or he can just switch to Mewtwo, which I'm weak to. So that's a thing he can do. What are his attacks? I thought he had an attack for one at least. Energy Absorption. Choose up two energy cards from your discard pile and attach them to Mewtwo. And then Cyburn for 40. Alright, so he has no... He has a grass... Oh, he used it to retreat the... 
Okay, well, I mean... And a growl. That's what I had. Alright, well, he can't attack me next turn. Because even if he attacks me... Or he's not... He, he can't use Cyburn next turn, no matter what. Because even if he puts another energy card on the Mewtwo, which he will... Oh, he put it on the Grimer. And he didn't use energy absorption. Why not, mister? You can still use it. It's a card that you can use. I mean, okay. I don't get that, but why wouldn't you... Are you stupid, Mr. Scientist Man? Grass energy on coughing. Why wouldn't... Why? See? He had another psychic energy. He could have put the psychic energy on... He could have put the psychic energy on the Mewtwo, used energy absorption, gotten the grass out of the graveyard, put it on the Mewtwo, and the next turn he could have sideburned and killed me. But he didn't do that. So, whatever. I'm okay with Drago. I'm good at Drago. That's my favorite type of game plan. Uh, kill you? Okay. Whatevs. I'm cool with that. And we got a Snorlax. And it's... Oh, yes, that's really good, actually, because it has a resistance to Psychic. So if we can do a good job of weeding out all these grass types... Oh, it's a wheezing. Uh, use Self-Destruct. Can you use Self-Destruct for me, please? Oh, yeah. All right, so the wheezing, as bad as that art is, as, offens as offensive as that green is to my eyeballs... <gasps> I drew a sand shrew, and I have a sand slash on my bench. And I can't evolve it yet, and that's frustrating. So we're going to put the Snorlax down, too. Um, we are still going to use a potion here, because if he poisons us on the crackback, then it dies. And I'd rather get more value out of this Machop. So considering there's no Psychic on the... He doesn't have a Psychic type in play, I'm just going to ride this Machop, hopefully, to victory. Which is perfectly reasonable, because the Machop is strong enough to carry me, I guarantee you. Alright, still no poison. So, I'm gonna use this other potion, put him down to 20, and then regardless of what he does, what he does, wow, what he does on his next turn, unless he puts another energy on and uses self-destruct, which I believe, yeah, 3, so... It does 60 to me, but it also does 60 to him, so... First of all, we're going to put the Sand Slash on the Sand Shrew. And then we're going to Energy Surge for a Fighting. We're going to put the Fighting on the Sand Slash. Um, and then play a Potion, I guess. Yep, so... So the wheezing is dead right now. Whether that's going to be from another low kick or him just self-destructing, I don't know yet. But uh, because the self-destruct, the self-destruct does 60 to him. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I believe the self-destruct also does either 10 or 20 to each benched Pokemon. Now, do I? Let's see. Hitmonchan. Now I can, I can just kill him with the Machop. I can just kill him with the Machop, but then on the, on the crackback. All right, so he has no threats on his on his on his bench. He just has a Grimer that can do ten. Okay, so instead of killing him with the Machop. I'm going to switch out to Rattata and then get him that way. Mainly because the Machop was poisoned, so even if I kill the Weezing, in between uh, me passing to him, it does 10, and then him passing back to me, it does 10. So the Machop would have died anyway. And considering he has no threats on the board, that can do 30 and knock out the Rattata in one shot. I just, you know, just why not? You know what I mean? And I'm a chop. I want to draw energy cards. All right. Yeah, I would much prefer to draw some energy cards, please. 
And he's doing a whole lot of nothing over there. And I just keep drawing Pokemon. That's fine. Draw go benefits the guy with more action, and currently that's me. And he's probably looking to draw a Muck to put on his Grimer. Sweet. Look how easy this game is, guys. Look at this. Draw go is my favorite. Bite you. Go down to three prizes. We're halfway home, kids. We're gonna get a uh, fighting energy. There we go. That's what I like to see. So he's gonna put in his other energyless coughing and put another Grimer on the board. All right, so we gotta kill them all. It's still nothing else. Just go. That's fine with me. That puts me way ahead. Oh yeah, I don't have the. I didn't put the Hitmonchan on the bench yet. Hitmonchan. And bite you. Dude, Rattata doing work. Level 9 Rattata. Alright, now he's... Oh, put on the Grimer again. You would assume that if he is piling up all those energies on his Grimer, then he has the Muck to evolve it into. You would think that. That doesn't mean he does. But that's what you would... That's... That's what you would think. He played a Mewtwo, the other Mewtwo. That Mewtwo he just played was the one that came out of the booster packs. The other Mewtwo that he played earlier was the Mewtwo that came from the movie? The first movie, I think it was? No, that wasn't... Or no, was it? There were four promo cards that came from the movie. There was a Dragonite, there was a Pikachu, and that Mewtwo, I believe... And then one other card I don't remember. I have all of them. They're around here somewhere. And I got paralyzed. And I can't retreat because of that. But that's okay. Because eventually, I'm going to draw an Arcanine. And it's going to be awesome. Man, I have all the cards ever. Sansa, yeah, on two. Just don't like the I guess we'll just keep piling it up on the Hitmonchan. And I just gotta pass. I can't do anything. Can't retreat, can't attack. Don't have a switch. Not like a tree branch, like the card switch. Yup! He paralysis locked my Rattata up. It's okay though. And a Professor Oak. This is not a hand I want a Professor Oak away, I'll tell you that right now, because it's still really good. But we're going to load up on the Hitmonchan. Because I already used up my plus power here. And he's going to start loading up the Mewtwo. That's fine. If I... Let's see here. He's going to kill the Rattata. I put out... So the, the Mewtwo has two attacks. One is Barrier. And the other is an attack that has 10 base damage. And then does plus 10 for each damage counter on it. The Mewtwo has 60 hit points, but no damage counters on it. So... And the Sand Slash isn't weak to Psychic, it's weak to Grass. And I don't want to play the Growlithe, because that's kind of my trump at this point, in case I draw an Arcanine. So we'll just play the Hitmonchan to be safe. Or we can just draw a computer search. That's also cool. So we're going to play this computer search real fast. We're going to ditch the Rattata. And the Rattata. And we're going to go find an Arcanine. We're going to play the Arcanine on the Growlithe. We're going to put a Fire Energy on the Arcanine. We're going to play the Magmar. And assuming I don't draw anything relevant next turn, we're just going to play the Fire Energy on the Arcanine, then Professor Oak for a new hand. So there's 40 damage there. Should have anticipated that retreat. Okay, Psychic. See, 10 damage plus 10 more for... Oh, for each energy card attached to me. Oh, so I'm dead. Okay. Uh-huh. I didn't think that's how that worked. <laughs> Whoops. 
Uh, okay, we're gonna play the Arcanine now. Guess what? You're gonna get tooked down. Yo, dog. I heard you like takedowns. Bam. One more. That's fine. See, I'm so over taking damage. I used to think cards were bad because they had downs downsides. Like, I would have never played Arcanine because you have to discard a fire energy to use flamethrower and you gotta take damage for for takedown. But who cares? I'm I'm winning. So fuck him. Get the paralysis. You can get there, man. Yeah, Rick, get there. See, I'm cheering him on now. Maybe this is like a precursor to Walking Dead. Rick is a scientist because he's trying to research the cure for the whole fucking outbreak. We're going to play the fire energy on the Magmar. We're going to play energy retrieval. We're going to discard him a chop. And we're going to get fire and a fighting. And then we're going to pass because we can't do anything. I don't believe I'm playing more than one switch, so it'd be pointless to dig for it with Professor Oak. And he's 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 not gonna kill me anytime soon. He's gotta run out of luck on this paralysis eventually. Not this turn, <laughs> but eventually he will. At some point, we're gonna we're gonna hope. Another Growlithe. Uh, play an energy and pass. gonna drag this out more, Rick. You and your tiny hand. <laughs> that still gets me. Alright. Hashtag no paralysis. God. <sighs> I mean, he's gotta retreat it eventually, right? Because as soon as he... I guess it doesn't really matter, considering any of my attacks. I might just start putting... it. Energy's on the Snorlax. Yeah, fuck it. Let's just start doing that. I mean, what else are we gonna do? He attacks on four. So I have the time. As long as I keep drawing energies like I have. Just that if I Professor Oak, I go to, what, uh, 13 cards after my next draw step? So I'm pretty close to milling out. But if he keeps paralyzing me like this, then... That might matter. God in heaven. Uh, he might actually get there. Lucky shit. I mean, it is a 50-50 chance every single time. Uh, fire energy. Go. That Grimer's gonna get there, I swear he is. Yep, I mean, he's not putting anything on his current Grimer. <laughs> He's actually gonna kill my Arcanine. God. Um, another Growlithe. Okay, we're gonna put the Fighting Energy on the Snorlax, and then assuming oh we have another Fire Energy. All right, fuck it. Yup, kill my Arcanine, man. Do it. That's fine with me, buddy. You got there. Congratulations, Rick. You and your tiny hand. <laughs> Just to add insult to injury, even the one that killed me paralyzed me. <laughs> Why you gotta Christopher Reeves me like that, man? That's fucked up. Um, Snorlax. Snorlax is gonna get in there. Because we're gonna play this. I almost put it on the Machop, that would've been bad. And then we're gonna body slam you. Is that, is that okay? Is that cool? We're gonna paralyze you, how about that? Oh, what's good? Get paralyzed. Does that how how does that? Does that taste good? How does that taste? Does that does that sound good to you? Is that good? Okay, cool. God, that took way longer than it should have. Fucking paralysis checks. Da, 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 da. It looks like a skull. All right, we're halfway home, kids. Pidgeot. Okay, now this Pidgeot's interesting. Yeah, see how it says GB right there? Stands for Game Boy? This was never an actual card. This was just for the Game Boy version. So I'm not too familiar with it. 
Hopefully we'll never see it. Laboratory. Electrode, Golbat, Poliwhirl. And a bunch of garbage. Alright, so, on the next episode, we are going to go to... Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. We're going to go to the computer right now and get some mail? One piece of mail. How are you doing, BC? I have some information for you about Rick's deck. He's the master of the science club. I just... Can you just... Can you please try to stay up to date? I just beat him. <sighs> like, I really... J and that's bad advice, too. He says get psychic Pokemon. The only thing psychic Pokemon is weak to is psychic Pokemon. And he also plays psychic Pokemon. Devolution Devolu Spray. Yup. Thanks, man. Winky face, that was eventful. Alright, so in the next episode, we're gonna go do another uh, club. I don't know which one. Probably not the Water Club. And probably not the Psychic Club. And if I remember correctly, the Fighting Club is the last one that you can face. It's like Giovanni, essentially. So I think next episode, we're gonna go try to take down the Rock Club. Alright, so until then, I'm Broken Champion. We're done here.